This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview is an excerpt from a recent program. To hear the entire program, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. Philip, last week we spent a lot of time talking about trends that were going on in 2015. Tonight, we're devoting the show to looking forward to 2016. So put your prognosticating hat on. What are you expecting from the new year? I'm expecting that most of my predictions will be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go out on a limb. <laughs> um, I think probably this will be the year that, that Final Cut Pro Ten is finally taken seriously, that there's enough evidence that, that even those people who are still going through sort of separation issues from the way it was launched – uh, we'll get over that and realize that it may not suit them, but it is a fairly viable professional tool and a lot of people are using it. And so it would be nice to get over that. I mean, it's been enough controversy over it um, since it was released. And too many people are still letting the way it was released get in the way of what's a damn good application and, and you know, every bit as uh, as capable as you know, Premiere Pro or Media Composer in the professional editing space. Yeah, but if we look back two weeks, remember the flurry that blew up when Beats announced that they were hiring uh, an avid or premier person and all of a sudden the world was ending and the Twitter sphere just exploded? And Beats isn't uh, even a part of Apple in that regard. It's totally a separate no. from Apple HQ. Yet and everybody was saying it's my NLE and not yours. The finger pointing was just as, as fast as ever. Well, it was a, it was definitely a clickbait um, link. I mean, as you said, Verge, uh, Beats is a completely separate company. It is owned by Apple, but I suspect that maybe they had some visitation from from people on the Final Cut Pro team to explain to them just why Final Cut Pro 10 would be a much better choice for them in production. <laughs> And I suspect that every other Apple subsidiary is having a little review of their production features. But it's it's very common. I mean, Apple make no uh, dictate as to what their commercials have to be edited on. Internally, there, so they do Final Cut for, the, for all the internal production. Uh, they always have since they acquired it. So both versions. Outside companies that are contractors or independent of Apple don't necessarily have to use that. But as I said, I suspect that Beats might be strongly encouraged to move over to the modern platform that Apple supports. Yeah, well, I think it points out just a bigger <laughs> issue is that we, like, we still like to define ourselves in terms of the tools that we use oh. as opposed to the jobs that we create. And that, I think, is always going to cause a problem as long as we are tool operators rather than storytellers. What do you think? Absolutely. Uh, I, I still cringe to this day when somebody describes themselves as an avid editor or a uh, defined by the tool. You know, a carpenter's don't define themselves by the, the brand of saw that they they use. I mean, I've never heard of somebody describing themselves as a, a Ryobi carpenter or anything remotely like that. The sort of engine uh, tuning products that your garage uses, you don't care about them. I don't know why we are so obsessed with the tools. Partly, I, I guess, it's because the tools take a long time to learn to a degree of fluidity, and there is a big investment in that. Uh, but I really, I think it's it's a it's a projection of insecurity that I'm not really sure that I made the right decision because I really don't know the capabilities of every single tool. So I'm going to defend my decision as being the right one because I made it. And there's a, a little bit of that go, goes on. And I, I hopefully we'll get over that and realise that, look, if you're using iMovie, um, it's going to be perfectly fine. If you're a storyteller, you can still a story with Windows Movie Maker, iMovie on, a, on an iPad, anything. It's the storytelling skills that matter, how you, you use the, the edits to advance the story and, and affect emotion is really what's important. It's not, does this have this tool or that tool, it's slip or slide or, you know, whatever's most comfortable for you. I think we're in a great era where there are no bad choices. It can only be inappropriate choices for you, but every NLE that's available now is capable of you being used in a fully professional environment, whether it suits you that's another question. Okay, so we've got Final Cut 10 now sitting on a, a professional shelf. What else are you <laughs> expecting for 2016? I'm actually really intrigued by the iPad Pro. Uh, I've heard from a couple of early adopters, and they seem to find it a very viable field production 
tool with the camera built in straight into iMovie on, on the iPad Pro. It's got a big enough screen and, and enough storage space to make that viable and immediate upload. So you have an intelligent camera that you can edit on as, and upload as well. So I think that's going to be uh, an important trend. A lot of production is going to happen on on cell phones and, and um, pad devices simply because it can be um, and they're always with you. you know? I'm often asked, what's the best camera? And of course, the absolute best camera is the one that I have with me when I want to take a picture or a piece of video. So, you know, I, I do B-roll for, for our cooking shows wherever I see something that's interesting. So, so you know, a meat cabinet of aging meat in in, Circus, in Gallagher's restaurant in New York, New York. You know, I'm not sure when exactly I might want to use that, but I can capture the B-roll while I'm there for when I use it in the future. So having small cameras, and I think small cameras are, as I mentioned in the wrap-up show, are an important trend. We can put cameras where we never could put cameras before and get footage that we could never have before. People put GoPros all over the place on, on a production in the hope they might get just like three seconds of really unique footage that they couldn't have got any other way. And these inexpensive, very small cameras make it very, very easy. One of the issues of having more cameras and more camera formats is suddenly storage becomes even more important. Yeah. And what I was noticing in 2015 is, is that, one, there was a lot of longevity left in spinning media. They keep holding more and more on a hard disk, and SSDs still have not dropped in price, nor have they increased in storage. Are you seeing new storage trends coming in 2016? I don't think we're seeing much sort of uniquely new. We're seeing faster storage, and more, more affordable storage. Um, we're getting we're getting tools like ShareStation from LumaForge that are shared storage in a in a much more affordable package than we've been used to with the hundred thousand hundreds of thousands of dollars of of package. And that's an that's an area where I think they're still ripe for disruption. Is a, a shared storage that's suitable for a very small shop, you know, two or three, four people. And uh, most of the solutions are at the media enterprise level, and you know that's not really appropriate for for the small shop. Um, I think storage is just consolidating and becoming you know more bigger storage, so we can lose more at once. Um, RAID storage, so that it's protected, and just slowly, you know, prices are just trending down. I'm amazed. You know, three terabyte portable drive on Amazon uh, a week or two ago was under one hundred and forty dollars. I thought. No, I don't really need another portable drive right now, but gosh, I was tempted. <laughs> I, bought, I bought a four terabyte drive two weeks ago. It was $120, four terabytes. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. What's your take on virtual reality? Is it going to move into storytelling or is it going to stay with games? I'm pretty sure that we're going to move into storytelling with virtual reality. It's going to take a while because it's going to be a new medium. And people will take a while to understand how do you best tell a story within that medium. Uh, I, unlike three, I think the immersive in, uh, of immersiveness of the virtual reality environment will allow more complicated stories and more interesting stories. Because, um, and they're going to be a nightmare to produce because you won't have one fixed storyline that you have to pass through. So this is the whole um, interactive storytelling, which has been tried before but never, I think, really conquered. If we can get that conquered now with, with virtual reality, I think that will become very, very immersive and very, very powerful. Uh, it has a lot of applications in training and education as well. Philip, for people that want to keep track of your thinking and your writing, where can they go on the web? Uh, the best place is philiphodgetts.com, uh, or you can find me also at Lumberjack System or at intelligentassistance.com. And Philip Hodgetts at philiphodgetts.com. It's been a wonderful year spending time listening to your thinking, and I look forward to doing the same thing in 2016. Thank you very much. My pleasure. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. To stay connected and receive updates from The Buzz, sign up for our free weekly newsletter now. Or you can learn more about us on our website. And thanks for watching The Digital Production Buzz.